Your questions about business, career, personal development, and achieving the American dream are more than welcome. Call 855 making it 855-625-4648. Now, back to more Making It with Tommy and Todd. We're back with Tommy and Todd, coast to coast with singing sensation Chris Jamison of The Voice. Todd, what's going on? Let's ask some good questions here. Um, we want to talk about your experience on The Voice and the judges. I mean, you had uh, Adam Levine was your coach, you know, Blake Shelton, um, uh, Pharrell Williams, and Gwen Stefani. Um, what was the best advice that he gave you? Um, how was that experience? Yeah, I mean, the experience was awesome. Getting to work with uh, Adam Levine was a very weird, <laughs> surreal type of thing. Uh, I had only ever seen those four individuals, all the coaches, um, only ever in like magazines and on TV. So to actually be there in person and standing in front of them right. was a super cool uh, experience and, and super cool thing to look at uh, every time that we were on the stage. Um, but I think the biggest piece of advice that Adam gave me in particular um, was, in, in, in as, as maybe cheesy or stupid as it sounds, is just not to be nervous i guess i mean it's easier said than done obviously right. but when you go up on a stage like that and you've got tons of cameras flying around you you know that there's millions of people on the other end of those cameras um you know watching and everything it's very easy to get caught up in all of that uh and so he pretty much just said you know just perform to the room perform to who's in there uh don't worry about the people watching on tv and you know everything will work out and be fine <laughs> so to stay calm under pressure basically exactly yeah how was the audition process uh did you um have to stand in a long line when you got there you saw like a line a mile long and how, you know who who did you perform in front of how was that audition yeah the audition was uh great i actually kind of did it a different way rather than going um to the open call audition where you have you know those big lines and whatnot right. i actually sent a video into the show and they saw the video which i didn't even think that they would take the time to look at it but they did exactly. weirdly enough and uh i sent the video in next thing i knew i got called to do a call back in philadelphia and so i drove there with my mom and my guitar player we performed uh i, I performed three or four songs and then uh then I was, next thing you knew, I got a call and I headed to L.A. and we started shooting uh, the blind audition. So there's a little bit of work uh, put into auditioning for the show uh, before you actually get onto TV and whatnot. But um, all of it, I mean, with each step, I kind of just looked at it as, you know, whatever happens, happens, not a big deal. If worst thing that can happen is I go back to school, continue doing what it was I was planning on doing to begin with, uh, my family was always supportive regardless of the outcome. Uh, and so I kind of just kept my expectations low and just rode, I, I guess you could say, I just rode the wave for <laughs> as long as I could. Right, I mean, that that was just so exciting when you actually n found out you made the show, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember getting the call, I was in my bedroom and I walked downstairs and uh, I, I looked at my mom and then the both of us just kind of started crying. It was a uh, <laughs> very, <laughs> Who uh, called you, uh, Carson Daly? What's that? <laughs> Who called you, Carson Daly? No, Carson Daly did not. It was like a, I think it was just like a producer or something okay. from the show. Um, but, you know, they had given us the call saying, hey, we want you to come out for the blind audition. And um, it was a weird thing. I had never expected. You don't, you don't think, you know, I, I never thought that an average kid from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania would somehow get the opportunity to go to L.A. and in a live TV show. That's not be something the, that I yeah. ever thought be the was actual ever story. Happen. How, how was how was your how was the the your reaction to the fame that came? I mean, you're the same person, and then you get on the show. I'm sure the reaction to you, you know, was just uh, astronomically different than before the show. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot different. I remember coming off uh, the finale and coming back to Pittsburgh. It was right around Christmas time, and my uh, girlfriend. And I went uh, shopping at the mall, and I didn't think anything of it. Right. Um, but we went there, and then everyone, you know, stopping me for pictures and autographs and things like that. And honestly, it was awkward at first. I mean, I'm not used to <laughs> I'm not used to that at all. That so type of attention, right? Come up to me asking for pictures. I'm like, well, why do you want 
why do you want a picture of me? I don't right, know all the right. people here in the mall. And then I got to remind myself, oh, they watched you on the show and everything. So it's cool. I mean, it was nice to meet a lot of Did you expect it? Did you expect it. that when you, before you went on the show? No, I did not expect it. Well, I, you, like know, saying, you, you know, you know, know, singers are, are famous. You know, they get mobbed. I mean, you had uh, you had you had to have some idea, or you just kind of were just tunnel vision. Yeah, I mean, I was just tunnel vision. I was just focused on what yeah. I was doing. Uh, you know, when you're out in LA on the show, you're 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 filming and you're working twelve hour days, so you're really just focused right. on okay, completing this performance and completing this rehearsal and whatnot. So coming off the show. It was definitely a weird thing uh, to have people yeah. stopping me and everything. Pe- pe- people don't realize that, but like a lot of these, uh, like you know, these these hit TV shows like Friends or whatever, they're filming like in a windowless studio for hours, yep. and they don't really, you know, get in. T- they're not really in touch with how people are perceiving them. They're just working, you know. And then yeah, everyone and sees yeah, they're so it's famous. It's incredible too because these those um, those spaces, those those warehouse types of things, it's just these stages called and they're just like i just said they're just big square warehouses and they build the set within those warehouses right so it's like a you know you're really confined and you're you're working it's uh, not as glamorous as it as it seems what's that it's not as glamorous as it seems no i mean well don't get me wrong it's still you're still in hollywood right it's still pretty glamorous but it's work compared to pittsburgh yeah it's work yeah exactly it's a lot of work hey chris tell me about uh, tell us about you know the reality of the music business, like I have a, I have you know I have a friend that's a, you know singer songwriter and uh, she's 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 gone through some similar things to you and like uh, I've learned a lot about the music business for her and it's a real cutthroat business behind the scenes. I mean, as far as you know, it's not as simple to make it big as it as it looks. Like getting signed on a record deal doesn't mean you're guaranteed you know mega stardom. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work, and that's, that's definitely something that I had, um, you know, I knew that it was going to be hard work, but I once I, I didn't realize how much work it was going to be until I was actually in the thick of it. Um, right. But, but, but I think what's awesome about it is the fact that, you know, I get to, for a living, do what it is that I love to do to begin with. Oh, so totally, going yeah. To, going to work for me is... You know, awesome. I get exactly. to perform and sing for people and, and share my gifts with all of them, yeah. and it's just a cool, cool experience. Your, 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 your. The money. The thing that got me was how much the money's made on the concerts, and not, you know, the the albums. You know. Yeah. And, and that type of stuff. Just interesting. Yeah, definitely. A lot of it is based on live performance and merch sales and all that different stuff. Um, especially because today's world, everything is streamable online and, and you know, right. Um, you know, you're, you have access to the music so much more quicker than you would if it was still, you know, stuff was still going uh, strong on like CDs and whatnot. Speaking of speaking of your music, uh, it's kind of a, a hybrid question. One, tell us about your albums that that your album that you have your your album you already made and the album that's coming out, and also uh, when you're writing these songs for your albums. Uh, how do you consider the audience? Do you consider their psychology? Uh, do you, you know, to, to make a hit song, you just flow out of your intuition? Like, how do you do it? Like both, what's your album and that? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, um, because this was kind of my first solo project that I had ever done, I was kind of experimenting. I mean, I was a lot of trial and error and trying to figure out, okay, how do I want to write? What do I want to sound like? What do I want to say? Um, who's going to want to listen to it, are they going to think it's good, you know, all, all those different things. And what I realized, though, at the end of it was that what was more important, especially because today, you know, fans and fans of different artists, they have access to, you know, these, these artists a lot more than they, they used to. And what I mean by that is, you know, we have our Twitter and Instagrams and everything, and, and you're supposed to kind of give your fans, you know, a sneak peek into what it is, you know, that I maybe do every day or you know when i'm not doing music what are my hobbies and interests so they they really get to know the artist on more of like a personal level and so when i am now writing a lot of the times i'm just writing whatever it is that's on my mind on my heart you know on and happening in my life and and hopefully in return you know because my the the way i view it is my life is no different than 
anyone else's life. I get to sing for a living, so that's cool. But, you know, there's a lot of singers in the world, and there's a lot of people doing pretty incredible things in the world. So that's how you're connecting. It's just like by be, being yourself and connecting with other people that are feeling the same thing you're feeling. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. correct. Correct. You know, I, uh, I heard this uh, CEO from Motown said that the music business is basically you have to be like a mini psychologist because you have to figure out what people really want to hear, whatever. But yeah. so somehow you have to connect with people, you know, to have a mm -hmm. hit song. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, Chris, following up on the uh, last uh, comment that you made, um, I, the first time I heard you, I couldn't get over how soulful you were. And I, I know that, uh, you know, a lot of guys in Pittsburgh are probably soulful. But uh, do, did you get that comment from other people that y they didn't expect that coming out of you? I did, yeah. I, and and a, a lot of those comments are things like the, the whole soulful thing came whenever I did, um, I did Georgia on my mind um, on the show. Right. And after I sang that, I mean, for me, I've, I've always been, you know, I don't lock myself into certain genres of music. I kind of just listen to everything from Frank Sinatra and, you know, all the guys in the Rat Pack from Michael B. Blay and then you have Justin Timberlake and Bruno Mars and all these different guys and I kind of look at it as like a melting pot essentially. Like I got all these different inspirations that kind of help me to craft, you know, my own sound and what I want to sound like and everything. And so, I mean, that's just the way that I sing. I never like intended it for it to be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to be a soulful singer and I'm going to sing this way. Uh, it's just kind of the way that I, I developed my voice and just what I love to sing and it's how I love to sing. I think that guys like, I mean, when you watch Ray Charles uh, perform or Frank Sinatra, like it's not just listening with your ears, like you're experiencing that music right. um, in such a different way um, be, because of what those guys bring to the table when they perform. So I just try to, you know, emulate that and, you know, try to, constantly look for inspirations um, from today and then also from, you know, long time ago, whatever. Chris, one of the uh, things that I always wonder about, and I'm sure many of our listeners do as well, as the votes are coming in, do you have any idea how you're doing in the vote count? Is that made uh, known to the contestants? No, no, we have no idea. So the first time that we find out what the vote count is, you are seeing our reaction <laughs> on TV. Uh -huh. uh, it's all live, so we don't know who's going home, who's staying, what, who's up by so many points. I mean, it's all, it all happens in real time. Chris, what are your plans for the future? Um, you know, I, I used to have my whole entire, well, I thought at one point I had my whole life figured out. Uh, that was completely wrong. And I was, uh, I, you know, had to learn very quickly that, especially in the music business, and I'm sure a lot of other businesses, um, you know, you can right. plan things out. I I know what I'm doing tomorrow, but I cannot tell you what I'm doing next week because it changes every single day. My main goal is just to make music, uh, you know, to hopefully have people that like it and support it and just to be able to, you know, touch people with the gift I've been given and to use it in a way that, you know, um, doesn't just bring glory and stuff to my name but you know brings glory to god and the person that gave me this gift so it's not you know i'm i'm, I'm not sure what the future holds but i'm going to keep doing my thing and doing what i think feels right and what it is i'm supposed to be doing and hopefully you know people in return um you know like that, that that's that's very inspiring chris uh what advice would you give to all the aspiring singers out there looking to make it big in 10 seconds um just sing wherever it is you can don't say no if someone wants to sing in a coffee shop or in a part of a thousand people. Just say. Okay, uh, tell us uh, in about 30 seconds about your album, where they can get it, what the name of the album is, and um, and all that good stuff. Yeah, uh, my album, which came out in August, is titled I Am Chris Jameson. Uh, it's four songs. It's on iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Play, anywhere you get music, you can find it on there if you search for my name. Um, and then I also have a Christmas project. I know it's after the holidays, but right. I'm still in that holiday mood. I got a Christmas project that you can find in those exact same places okay. as well. And they can find where you uh, might be performing and all that good stuff there, too. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. This was a great interview. Uh, glad to have you on here. Thank you so much, Chris. 
You've been, you've been listening to Making It with Tommy and Todd, Coast to Coast. We'll be right back. <laughs> 